Jasvinder Sangera, CBE, a survivor of forced marriage and founder of the charity Karma Nirvana. Jasvinder, welcome to the programme. Um, what's your take? What's your take on doctors, frankly, just not doing their job? Well, Nigel, um, I can't talk without first letting you know what my experience is. I was born in Britain. England is my home. I don't know any country, bar this country. My parents were Sikh. I'm one of seven sisters. I have one brother and we were raised within a family dynamic whereby we were taught a whole set of rules that cause dishonor on my family. So I have to disagree with your person that's just spoken. I cannot talk about this issue as a survivor without talking about the concept of honor. So we were taught that we couldn't integrate with British society. My mother actually said to me, the worst insult I could bring to her front door, not just me, the sisters, is that you're behaving like a white woman. Now, what she meant by that, these bigoted views that clearly exist within these communities and families still today, is that you can't integrate, you can't go out with your friends, you can't wear lipstick, you can't wear makeup. There's so many things you can't do. You can't even choose who you want to marry. If you do these things, you are bringing shame and dishonor on the family. And what we were taught was there was a risk. We understood that we had to conform to a set of belief and value systems that prevented us from having independence. This is coercive and controlling behavior. But in all the thousands of victims I have supported since 93, set up a charity, none of them can speak about this experience without speaking about honor-based abuse. Back in 2008, then PM was Gordon Brown. And I remember making this point that in one West Yorkshire region, a hundred South Asian females went missing off a school roll in one academic year. Just like that, they disappeared. Nobody asked where they had gone. And I made the point, if this was a hundred white British females, this country would be jumping up and down and asking where they went. They didn't because of the fear of and being trained to be culturally sensitive. When I went missing in school, and let's not forget, all my sisters were taken out of school at 15, British born, forced to marry strangers, nobody looked at where they were, nobody asked the question, nobody treated us as, as a safeguarding issue. This is a so, safe. So, so Jasvinda, issue. how do we how do we change this? How do we deal with this? As I say, you know, uh, the report today suggesting that doctors just find this too difficult. What do we need to do to improve? And I know you've been working with victims over these years. What do we need to do? And by the way, I'm, I agree with you. I think keeping this as a category of honour abuse is the right thing to do. I'm absolutely with you on that. What do we do to improve things? What we've got to do is deal with this as a safeguarding issue. Look, our country are very clear. What is child protection? What is, what is a vulnerable adult look like? This has got to be dealt with not as a cultural issue, as a different issue. Cultural acceptance does not mean accepting the unacceptable. Let's get by, back, back to safeguarding. Safeguarding children and young people. What does that mean? Safeguarding the most vulnerable of adults that don't have mental capacity, etc in the context of honour abuse or child marriages or forced marriages. That's the conversation we have to have. And we've got to give our professionals the confidence to do that, to say, if you joined the police force or a GP, etc., you signed up to protect people, to preserve life, etc. In this space, that comes over and above cultural issues. Yeah, I know. I think you're, listen, you're, I think you're absolutely right. And we need people like you to put a bit of backbone and a bit of spirit into our public servants across this country. Jasmina, thank you for joining me. We'll definitely thank have you, you back on again to talk about this subject. Thank and you. Thank you.